sunny in New York. Better put on some glasses. Oh. This morning, I'm going to, um, you know what I did yesterday? Met up with some of my peoples. Yeah, I got peoples in New York. And uh, these are some of my technical people, my tech people. There's a, there's a, okay, all of, I think in every grouping all over the world, there's a, I think they've labeled us or the label phenomena as glues. Um, now, as a, for instance, a stage manager in, in theater or whatever, uh, they, they take what's happening, they sort of are the glue that hold, holds things together, you know? Um, uh, or at a level where, where they can see the, the cracks and they try to fill the cracks or whatever it is. Okay. So the people that I associate almost all over the world, I realize that you, you gravitate to your, your, your level, is that we're sort of unassuming people, but we're looking at situations and we're helping where we can. We never want the glory, you know what I mean? It's not even about the power, it's not even the power behind the throne kind of thing, you know? It's another kind of thing. I go for that, don't worry about that. But let me tell you what's happening. Uh, I, uh, oh, first of all, as you notice, uh, this is a satellite set. I won't say this is another, yet another <laughs> ADOS set. <laughs> You know, there was a the South African one in, in Limbete, which is, I like that one. There was one at my sister's house, which is sort of wrong, whatever it is. And now we had, you know, we're in Harlem, and this is the set here. Um, and uh, even though, I don't like this, the desk of the ADOS, no, it's not the, it's a desk of the ADOS. It's like a lot of desks. Everybody should, everybody should have a desk of ADOS. I mean, every ADOS person where you're, when you're, you know, you get your thoughts going up there, and you're sort of speaking, because you're going to put things in action, right? And, uh, now I got the American flags here. Actually, I got four of them. One, two, three, four. It's only because America's born on the 4th of July. That's, a, that's their number, four. But my number is three, so when I sit down, I sort of block out the four and I got the three, right? Oh, you say, oh, look, the American flag, you, you know, oh, they, they did this wrong on the flag. Nah, the flag didn't do you wrong. The people that claim the flag did you wrong, and then you, then you say, oh, because, the, the, then you say the flag do you wrong. The flag can't do nothing to you. You claim the flag and you change that stuff around. You know, let me put, let me give you a better example. So Cornell West, I knew this before him. Uh, so Cornell's on, on Joe Rogan. I'm trying to, he, anyway, he said something interesting, and I knew this before. When the whole thing about the uh, 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 what's that um, uh, 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 Star Spangled Banner hit, you know, what's the alternative? And I, I looked it up, and there was this, there was this woman in Ohio. You know, she's the one that had a poem, and then of course uh, Brother Ray Charles. He's the one that. Popularize the thing, America the Beautiful. That's a more important song, okay? So here's what here's some, here's, here's a suggestion. The ADOS people, they should start singing that song in replace of the other song. And you say, and they say, well, no, this is a better song. And it don't deal with the slavery. And it comes from a woman, I think she was an abolitionist too, but a woman, that a right thinking, you know, a woman, white woman, if you will, and it's popularized by a black man. There's that male-female thing that I'm always looking for in everything you got. I'm always looking for that male-female uh, energy, right? And we should start singing that song, and Gathering, or you just say the poem, you know, or, or acknowledge your brother Ray, and replace, and, and ATOS, one of our things, as reparations, we're replacing the Star Spangled Banner with America the Beautiful. ta -da! Boom! Yet another one. And, uh, you know something, I really didn't go to... To flags all the way. I still, I still have the residuals. <laughs> you spare lab technician. And when you pour something in, 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 a, um, in, in, in a test tube, even if you pour something out, there's always a tiny bit left, a little residue. If you fill up a vase and you pour water out, there's always just a tiny bit less in the residue. So when you pour, when you pour something else in it, you sort of take it some little time. So I'm at a point where I can't really. I don't, you know, I, I know what the American flag thing is, and I know we have to have it because the because American flag can't be trying to go against itself. I got that. So I made a compromise. I just bought a swimsuit because, you know, there's a swimming pool right out there. So every morning at 11 o'clock, so I'm going to start doing my, I'm gonna do my uh, sort of exercises here, and then I'm going to go to the pool and do a little, you know, uh, you know uh, Zuma in the pool. <laughs> Do a little swimming, you know. I, don't, I got a, a thing for earplugs. I hate the water in my ear, but, but I got a new look. Stars and stripes, but they black and gray, white, black, gray, and white. It's, you, you see? Okay, you don't understand. But here, look. As I said, oh, oh man, I don't think I have enough light here. Hey, right, let's turn some lights on. Oh, wait a second. Let's turn some lights on. Where's my other thing? Where's my other thing? Where's the uh, control for this other light there? Oh, that should be enough. Let me leave that because I can't find that control right now. 
What's up? You know, I might have been talking to you in the dark. You don't understand what I'm saying. And plus, I need more light because I'm trying to read something. Where's my... Who makes the control for this thing? Well, uh, Professor Q controls too. I really like... Oh, here it is. Sorry. Hey. Oh, uh, oh. one of my buddies... See this? This is a Mexican poncho. Very unique. My travel poncho. So, here, let me put this, let me this off so I can see. This is so cool. I like this. Can you see me now? <laughs> ADOS bringing to light. You know, America beautiful, whatever it is. Anyway, I like that part. Um, but this Mexican poncho I'm sitting on, but this is my travel poncho. I've had it since I traveled in the, man, in the, in the early 90s. This poncho's older, and it's very unique. It, they used to do, each region had a different kind of thing. That's so like, they, they, people have different thoughts. Anyway, but I was looking through a thing. I'm going to start, uh, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start. I want to get. Um, I want to get Buddy to start podcasting. And this room would be an individual. He would just have individual thoughts and have a rule. And he has so many books here. He can only pick up one book if he wants to. He should pick up one book and just have a little passage from it, and then go on with a with a with a, with a podcast. Then in the other room, in the living room, where you have the artifacts and much more books, I would use that one. I want him to use that one for like I want to say interrogation, but he can have a guest, like one or two guests. Like a male, you, if it's two, it's got to be a male and a female. If it's one, it could be a male or a female. But he is behind the camera, you don't see him. And he's, I don't want to say interrogating them, but he's challenging people, and then that'll be a different kind of podcast. Then the third one, which I'm not going to tell you about because it involves money. He says it doesn't really involve a lot of money. So there's this book he has here, My Folks Don't Want Me to Talk About Slavery, uh, edited by Belinda Hormens. Hormens. H U R M E N C. This came out. He's got a lot of books, man. I can start reading this without my glasses. Um, uh, what's the date on this? 1990. Oh, copyright 1984. I find that the books, like, like my favorite books come out in like the early, the copyrights usually in the early 50s, you know, up to the early 60s. So you go to anything in with Isaiah Johnson, age 82, when interviewed in uh, uh, Lil, Lil, Lillington, uh, North Carolina, Route 1, blah, blah, blah. I was 10 years old when the Yankees came through. I was born February 12th, 1855. I belonged to, I belonged to Jack Johnson. My missus name was Nancy, blah, blah. And things like that, they, they, uh, let me just read this, Sarah uh, Debro, D-E-B-R-O. I'm just going to go into this in the middle. I need, I'll give it a little bit. She was 90, when she was 90, July 24th, uh, 1937, Durham, North Carolina, interviewed by Travis Jordan. Let's go to anything. I remember when Wheeler's, when Wheeler's cavalry came through, he was fitters. They, uh, but they uh, was mean as the Yankees. They stole everything they could find and killed a pile of niggas. Uh, they came around checking. They asked the niggas if they wanted to be free. If they say yes, then they shot them down. But if they say no, they let them alone. They they took three of my uncles out in the woods and shot the and shot their faces off. Ados, man, come on! If you if you want to, this is another one. Betty Coffer, yes, uh, yes, I guess yes. Sir. I remember Mars Isaiah Lash, my papa's master. He was, a, he was a low, thick-set man, very jolly and friendly. He was real smart and, 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 and good, too, because his colored folks all loved him. He worked in the bank. And when the Yankees came, uh, instead of sh uh, shuttering the door against them like the others did, he bid them welcome. So the Yankees done took the bank but gave him, uh, but gave him back, but gave it back to him for his very own. And he kept it. But there were lots of bad feelings because he never give folks the money they put in the gold bank. These, this is our, this is our peoples. This is our peoples talking in their own words. These are, and there's a lot of slave accounts. This is not the only book, there's a lot. So right now, I'm game. I'm saying that a lot of people right now, what they're doing is they're sniping against other people, they're whatever doing, they're infighting. Stop it not stop it, you can keep on going, but at some particular point you need to go and talk, 
if, if you can't speak to your direct ancestors, you know, do with you know, some spiritual thing, then find them in the book. They're speaking to us. There's a lots of evidence, and it's not just that. I mean, look, bless Antonio Moore's heart. I like what he's doing because they keep on focusing on that. Bless, uh, bless, bless Yvette, Miss Yvette Carnell, because she's doing what she has to do. Bless, you know, Professor Darity and his wife. They're doing what they have to do. The question is, if that's covered and we're using that thing, what can you do? What can you do? That's your, you, if you keep on just responding or echo chaining, echo chambering what people are already saying, that's, you're wasting our economy. There's so much other that can be out there. So if you have a voice, you should be doing some other stuff. If something's covered already, let it be covered. You see what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about. Me. You know, I'm me. I T. From the Patterson thing that takes it to bed. Let you know what I only suspect. From um, ADES, a reality of the ADOS that would be the American descendants of chattel slavery.